So Pete is actually at Firaxis in Maryland. And uh, while I'm here at the 2K offices in California, we're, uh, we're connected through um, Mumble, and that's what you guys are hearing him through. So we're, we're playing over the internet like many of you will come Tuesday. So uh, we're going to be playing uh, a couple matches today to, uh, I would say, to prove which of us, basically, basically which of us is a, a more valuable human being uh, in all ways. Uh, I think the stakes we're playing for. Uh, is that what we agreed upon? Uh, I, it was something like that. But uh, those are pretty serious stakes there. It's pretty, pretty close to that, some, something like that. And uh, so without further ado, uh, I am going to let you guys know that you're only going to be able to see my screen uh, because that's just how we have it hooked up. Pete's all the way in Maryland, so I don't have uh, him plugged into my streaming machine here. So and for Go ahead. And for those of you following along at home, I don't have the Twitch TV channel open, so I can't see what Greg is doing either. This is, uh, this is a straight up fair fight. That's right. So this is going to be, it's going to be, and for those of you saying my office is filthy, this is not my office. This is a spare room that people put a lot of junk in and uh, happens to be a good place to set up the streaming machine. <laughs> if I was out there, uh, you'd be hearing everyone in the entire office. So, uh, so you're only going to be able to see my screen. Uh, and also, I have the ability to, which I will be using liberally, uh, to mute my microphone, but only to Pete. So when I click this up, Pete can't hear me now. So I'm going to be able to talk to you guys about tactics and strategy, about what units I'm picking, what I'm doing, without Pete being able to hear me. And then I can click it back on to, uh, for the trash talk. So let's, uh, let's, get, uh, let's get going. Are you ready for this, Pete? I'm ready. I'm already in the lobby. I've got my uh, loadout ready to go. I managed to use all 10,000 points. Uh, we're doing a 90-second match, and I've picked up a squad that I think is going to work really well for Train Yard. So I'm just going to confirm that I'm ready while you're customizing your loadout. All right. So, and uh, I'm going to say goodbye to you for a little bit, Pete, while I get my army set up. Before I go, I want to encourage everybody in chat to give Greg your, uh, your best advice for how to construct a team. All right, guys. Now it's just you and me. So as you can see, Pete is already ready. He's managed to use every last bit of his 10,000 points. Now I have I've thought a little bit about what team I'm gonna uh, what team I'm gonna field here. It's important to me that I win. Now a lot of people in the chat have been saying, "Oh, go sniper, go sniper," and I th I feel like uh, well, I'm actually getting a lot of cyber disc uh, suggestions too. So my uh, my idea for what I'm gonna add here is I'm actually gonna go a little bit heavy on the XCOM soldiers. And I'm going to go sniper, as a lot of people have suggested. With the, um, we're going to go with, the, I believe it's Deadeye, but I can use the left stick to double check that this is the one I want. Yes, squad sight. Uh, but that's the one that reduces the aim penalty. I believe, no, that is, the, that is what I want. So I want the Deadeye sniper with a really kick ass sniper rifle, which means the plasma sniper rifle. So, and I'm also going to put him in. Now, I know that we're in train yard. So I'm going to have to go with Archangel Armor. It, I prefer if I can use the Skeleton Suit, because then I can use the Grappling Hook to get that high ground, the same way that I'm going to use the, uh, the Archangel Armor for. But in Train Yard, there's not a lot of, I mean, there's the tops of trains, but I want to be further back in the map. So I don't have to go Archangel. The problem with that is this is 5,200 points. It's right off the bat already more than half my points in the entire game. Uh, and then I'm going to go, uh, I don't think I actually, you know, I'll go. the scope is so cheap that I'll just go ahead and get it. And uh, of course, I can set the name. So uh, I'm going to pick someone in chat here that, uh, that sounds fun. Uh, let's see. Who should I name you after? Uh, we're going to go with uh, Pick Me. I see a Pick Me. It's going to be, ma oh my god, I can't read any of the names. You guys are going way too fast. Holy crap. I'm going to have to pick, uh, OK, I saw zero point. Z zero. Um, no. God. Look, I'm going to go with Mr. Don't Mess XCOM up just because he's been in every single live stream. I, I literally cannot read your names. It's moving so fast. So uh, don't mess XCOM up. You are my sniper. So you don't screw me up with, with this match. I'm going to be depending on you. OK, so it's the second unit. Now, uh, the normal strategy with, a, uh, with an Archangel sniper in multiplayer is uh, you typically go with a sniper and then a bunch of spotters. And sometimes people will go with a couple of floaters, which is not a bad idea. Um, they're relatively cheap, so you can, you can field several of them. I'm thinking 
I'm going to do something I haven't personally tried before and go with an assault. Well, let me see if I can actually, I, I don't know how much money this is going to cost. So let me, oh my God, the ghost armor is extremely expensive. Yeah, I can't do it. I was going to go an assault with a uh, ghost armor as the, uh, as the recon guy. In fact, I can go with recon. The problem is to give him a decent weapon, like a, uh, a light plasma. No, wait, I think I can do it. I can go an assault with a light plasma rifle with ghost armor. Oh, wait, but why would it be an assault? Why would it be an assault? No, no, no. What makes more sense is a uh, support guy because support would allow me to... Uh, I'm hoping that he's... I want the support build that has... Uh, he's extra fast. Not smoke jumper, uh, but none of them are cheap enough. So that's not going to... Uh, there's this sprinter. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna go. We're gonna go with assault because I think that uh, I think the running gun power there is gonna be good. So light plasma rifle, ghost armor. Don't need a pistol on this guy. I've got 350 points left, which isn't enough for any unit, not even a sectoid. So in that case, we're gonna go with the item is gonna be something that I can afford with 300 points. I could go med kit. Uh, the plating could be good if he goes melee, if he goes something like a chrysalid, but I don't think he's going to do that. So I'm going to go with the nanofiber vest, which just gives me more hit points. It's going to be a little more survivable. So what are, you guys, uh, what are you guys saying? You think I'm crazy, huh? You think this is a terrible idea? Recipe for disaster. This is really risky, you say. It's a, it's a, it's a top-heavy uh, top explanation. So... Uh, I saw a guy named Daniel that said this is a terrible idea. So, uh, Mr. Daniel, I'm naming my assault soldier after you. So the idea is that the sniper should be able to clean house. And that is the idea. That's the hope. Because, uh, because these, this sniper with a plasma sniper rifle, and especially a, a scope, which I can give him the scope, right? Uh, he, he's going to be able to hit anything and he's going to do an enormous amount of damage to everything he hits. Uh, the question is if he... Um, well, there are, some, there are some things that this could counter. Look, everyone thinks you're going to... Uh, everyone thinks uh, that I'm going to lose with this, but uh, we're going to go. I'm going to turn my microphone back on so we, can get, uh, so we can talk to Pete. All right, Pete. I set up my team. Good. Yeah, you're 150 points away from cap. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell you that the um, the chat pretty much unanimous thinks, unanimously thinks that I'm done for. Uh, I disagree with them. Uh, I think uh, I think this loadout I've got here might be slightly uh, unconventional, but I think uh, I think it definitely has some legs. All right. Well, since you're 150 points under the cap, you'll get to go first. So uh, when you're ready, you can hit start, and we will jump into the game. All right. Here we go, guys. Good luck, Greg. You too, Pete. Although I really want to win, so not too much luck. But, you know, the, the appropriate amount of luck to you, good sir. That's XCOM, baby. All right. Uh, I'm going to switch off my mic again so we can talk uh, tactics with you, chat guys. All right. Any seconds left? Oh, Jesus. All right, so yeah, don't forget about the, uh, the time. So first things first. I know everyone in chat is like, Greg is going to win if he doesn't dash. Yeah, I dashed a lot. But the, here's the thing. I'm going to be dashing with this soldier because my entire point is to, uh, is to get up there. Now, I can go half and half just to get a little more visibility before I go. But uh, I don't want to put my guy too exposed quite yet. I'm going to want to go around the side. Uh, but I do want visibility, so we're going to put him right there. And I, first things first going to get my uh, my Archangel Sniper. We're going to get him uh, we're going to get him up here and as far back as possible. Pretty much does not, there's no reason for him to be although you know what? I should be, I should have a backup plan where I can actually get to the ground in a decent spot. So I'm going to we're going to put him right here. There you go. You can hear the noise now. That's the 30 second warning. I'm going to put him right here as far back as I can and that's going to that's going to get him in a in a pretty decent spot for uh for seeing anyone. And I'm even gonna, no, I was gonna throw a battle scanner, but my, 
my concern about that is it might give away my um, might give away that I'm a sniper. So I'm just gonna go Overwatch with a pistol. All right, here I go. All right, so now Pete's taking his turn. As I mentioned earlier, we can't see his screen, so we're only looking at my screen. In the first turn, it's fairly unlikely that uh, that I'm gonna spot any of his guys. But not impossible. All right, so I can uh, I can see the chat here with you guys. There are a lot of people talking. A lot of people watching this game. Makes me makes me a little nervous. Good luck, Greg, even if you are screwed. Look, I really think that this, uh, that this strategy has legs. It's still early. There's a, there's a lot that could go on with this match. I did tell them that uh, I, I've, never, I've never actually done this one. I've never tried it, so we'll, we'll see. Okay, there's at least one person that says, I like it. Uh, it Mr. Uh, Void Trooper is asking to play best of three. That is our plan. Uh, as I told you guys, we're going to be live streaming for at least an hour. We're not sure exactly how long. We're kind of kind of play it by ear. But our, our objective is to go a best a best two of three for the um, for our official showdown. All right. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch back to my sniper rifle. Uh, now, strategy: you do not want to. Uh, go into Overwatch with your sniper at the beginning of the turn. I've made that mistake many times in single player. It took a while to uh, to shake myself of that habit because the whole point is, if I reveal a guy, I'm going to want to be able to take an active shot, not and not be stuck into doing uh, not being stuck trapped into doing Overwatch when I don't necessarily want to. So this isn't a great um, way around here. So uh, I'm actually getting to the point where I'm going to start getting up to him. So I think it's. Should I use one of my four ghosts? A little dangerous to use it this early. I purposely didn't do it the first. I didn't do it the first turn. I got 30 seconds. So the question is, do I want to use one of my four ghosts? Because I do not want to give away the fact that I'm going ghost yet. And I don't want him to get the first shot on me, uh, on my ghost armor guy. So I'm actually going to go ghost now and then and then run up there that gives me some pretty good visibility it's very exposed but because it's because I'm ghosted it'll be okay and now we're back to Pete's second turn I'm a little nervous. I'm getting more and more nervous. At least I have my coffee in my uh, Lucky Aperture Science mug. That's, uh, I feel like that's going to be what gives me the edge here. But I happen to know that Pete has a Firaxis mug, and I'm thinking that might be even more lucky in this context. My coffee's already cold. If you're relying on a Lucky Coffee mug, you've already lost. Yeah, my coffee's already cold. Clearly, uh, this is a bad omen. Should have used my tumbler. Less talking, more playing. I am playing. Well, right now I'm just waiting for Pete. I get a little 90 second break, a little mental break. While Pete's strategizing. A little nervous that I haven't spotted any of his uh, units yet. Your turn. All right, guys, so something has happened. We have visibility on one of his units. I could shoot him. It's an 88% chance it's gonna kill it, does 10 damage, he only has four hit points. Um, however, I I am nervous about that because- So I'm a little surprised I haven't seen any of your units yet. So I noticed uh, when you were building that, that there was a lot of points sunk into one unit. So I'm thinking I'm gonna see something big fairly soon, but I'm kind of surprised as to what that's gonna be.
All right, guys. So Pete's surprised. He was able. He was paying very close attention when I was uh, spending my points and got a little bit of insight in the, into the type of units I have. Uh, here we go. I have spotted a second unit. Oops. Uh, and it's another floater, regular floater. I'm thinking he might be going Archangel as well, Archangel Sniper. So I'm going to run my Ghost guy up further trying to get visibility on a potential sniper. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is take out that, uh, take out the 88% chance floater. That's going to give away the fact that I am going sniping strategy. Uh, makes, me, makes me a little nervous, but, uh, but it's good to get rid of the units when I can. Oh, plasma sniper, huh? That's right. I went with the, uh, I went with the classic. It's the uh, it's the other part of my build that's unconventional. Obviously, Archangel Plasma Sniper is uh, not any, by any stretch of the imagination a unique build. It is a, it is a pretty common a pretty common thing to do because it's it is very powerful. But there are counters to it. So there was uh, there was disagreement about whether or not I should. Give, give my uh, the sniper away by taking out a simple floater, which, uh, you know, I, I see both sides of uh, I see both sides of the fence there. But overall, I decided that taking out a full unit was was very valuable. Ooh. All right, go in silent mode. All right, we got that tension music going. So if you going. got a plasma sniper, I'm going to expect him to be up top somewhere. So I'm going to spend. Next few turns, checking some rooftops. Another unconventional unit. And I figured something high point cost, so... I wonder. The last time we played this map, I did the Plasma Sniper thing. And the counter for that is probably Ghost Armor Assault Soldier. So I'm gonna guess that's your... Oh, I'm gonna guess that's what he just did. I think he just saw my guy Ghost. Uh, so Pete because has... Because I hear things. Pete, oh, Pete heard... He heard, ah, okay, there we go. I'm seeing a 67% chance to do six damage. He's got a, a powerful XCOM soldier up there. Now this is very dangerous, but what I'm gonna do is, I believe if I go back here, I'm gonna be safe. I'm gonna use my assault soldier's run and gun, which allows me to uh, finish his move, to go two moves and then fire. And then I'm gonna fire here. Now if I critically hit, I could kill him, but I probably won't. I did critically hit, but did not finish him off. Oh, you know what? I should have just taken him out with the sniper. That was uh, that was stupid. Oh, it said 100% critical. I missed that. Nicely done. All right. I panicked and actually did that not the way I should have done it. But it worked out. I should have fired with the sniper right off the bat because I had squad sight. And instead, I used running gun and revealed my uh, my ghost soldier completely unnecessarily. Yeah, but he scored a crit because of that. So um, you know, it wasn't wasn't a bad shot. And you I didn't. Got my, uh, I didn't cost unit. Yeah, and I didn't think the sniper was going to have a hundred percent chance to hit. So I was hedging my bets. I, I should have checked that first. But uh, I was running low on time. Okay, we've got uh, Pete's floater has a little bit closed the gap here. All right, Pete can't hear me again. Now his soldier actually, I didn't kill him. I uh, critically wounded him. So if he has a med pack, he could uh, he could revive that soldier before the end. Uh, it's very unlikely. I don't see people um, fielding the um, med pack in multiplayer very often at all. Oh! I did not see that guy there. But Pete got unlucky with that miss. Uh, and it's a regular floater, 50% chance. I'm gonna go ahead and, he's just got a light plasma rifle. He's not gonna kill me in one hit anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and take the shot on him. I missed. So now the question is, should I take down this floater with my sniper, 
or should I go ahead and get the uh, far away one? I'm gonna hit the uh, I'm gonna hit the close one. No need for a critical hit. It is 78% chance it could miss. No. I managed to get that one. Now that one that's further away. All right, Pete. Now that was a uh, that was a calculated risk there. Not a risk. It was it was more like a, a known leaving him uh, exposed. I could have just ghosted him and kept him safe from that, but I thought taking a shot was going to be worth it. Suppressing my sniper. All right. That's interesting. Yes, this game is live, DJ Beats, as I have proven to you by saying your name when you ask that question. I really like the, uh, I love the suppression effect, the, the constant, the constant fire raining over the battlefield. Ooh, we've got another floater. That is a lot of floaters. Yeah, I tried something unorthodox too. Um, you're doing a good job of picking them off, so uh, I'm, I'm actually not feeling real good about my chances of success here. The sniper has such an amazing uh, increase, it's such an amazing advantage when firing at range that he actually has a higher chance of killing the guy that's super far away, even while suppressed, than he does of killing the guy that's, uh, that's suppressing him, which is interesting. The sniper is, uh, the sniper is a very powerful unit. That's, that goes, that cannot be contested. I did not realize he was... Overwatch. I've gotten lucky a couple times from uh, missed Overwatch shots. There. I'm gonna fire at this guy just above me. There we go. Managed to take him out. So I think I think he's only got two floaters left. I think I'm looking at uh, this one here that's so suppressing. So I noticed you took the uh, the light plasma gun. That was a good idea. Yeah, you know it was the most expensive gun I could uh, I could afford with the ghost armor. The ghost armor is. Very expensive. Okay, how many hit points do I have left? Oh, I've got all my hit points left. In which case, I think it's overall smarter to fire on the guy that's further away with a higher chance. To everyone watching, so Pete's gonna, he's gonna be able to hit my, my Archangel here, most likely, to get unlucky. So he hit him, but I, I felt that that was worth it for the uh, the increased chance of... Oh! But uh, if I was paying really close attention, which uh, which certainly the best of the players are going to, uh, it would have noticed that I'm out of ammo. So that's actually... That's actually a bit of a problem. It's not a huge problem, but it does mean that I can't uh, I can't fire this turn. So I'm going to go ahead and do... Remember at the beginning of the game, I moved here specifically so that I said I could do this in an emergency. Which gives me a chance to reload while under high cover. Oh, pizza. Your soldier that was bleeding out finally died. Uh, a lot of you guys are saying to use my pistol. I believe the uh, the standard stock pistol, not laser, not plasma, uh, only does two damage. And so with a crit, the best I could have done was uh, was take out three of his four hit points, which I didn't think was um, the right move to make. All right, I'm gonna have to play this one pretty carefully. I, uh, I don't like my odds here very much. Now what's interesting here is if you continue to maintain to break line of sight from my sniper, I won't be able to get that pretty much guaranteed kill uh, because I can't move and shoot. So as long as, you know, at the beginning of the turn you don't have line of sight. I can use my pistol, but as I said before, that's not going to kill him. Uh, unfortunately for you, I have two units, which will make it uh, very difficult to stay safe. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, that's odd. Huh. I'm gonna have to mute my microphone. So I'm fairly certain that uh, what Pete did was he used his blast off ability. Uh, I don't think it's called blast off. It's called something else. Uh, to take off and land anywhere else in the map because I was certain that he was behind this cover. I even blew my running gun to go get him and he's not there anymore. That was a very good move. Uh, obviously, uh, completely screwed me up. What I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, use my battle scanner as you guys are suggesting, although I'm going to have to do it very, very quickly. Uh, I'm going to get back in the air. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can. Two, one, right there. All right, that wasn't as... Oh, I didn't... Yeah. All right, too late. Uh, that's okay, though. I spent too much time uh, talking. Your turn. All right, so... Now I could use the battle scanner. Pretty wide range here. I'm going to go ahead and put it... We're going to put it up here to see if we can't spot him coming from that direction. Battle scanner is an exceptionally cool item. Oh man. Okay, he's not over there. I'm thinking use my last turn of ghost to really just. I don't need to ghost yet though. I can uh, I can go halfway. Because ghost does not actually use up one of your actions. It's sort of a free action that you can do in between your moves if you want. Now can my guy survive another direct hit from a floater? Yes, but a little risky, don't really want to do it, so I'm going to go ahead and do the ghost, use my last ghost, and hmm. since my battle scanner is kind of getting that other side of the map, I'm going to go ahead and try to get visibility on this side. I still don't see him yet. All right, Pete, these, uh, these last couple turns have thrown me for a loop here. I'm fairly, fairly sure I identified what you did that gave the slip. But this is, uh, this is a little nerve-wracking, I will, I will admit. Oh, you guys are right. Um, okay, let's go my turn again. Uh, so last turn, I saw someone suggest that I reload my uh, assault guy. So the situation I'm in right here is I have a unit that's considerably weaker than either of your two units. And your two units working together are going to be able to uh, to take me out. So I need to find some way to pick off one or the other of them. They're both wounded, but I don't think I can kill them both on the same shot. So uh, it's going to be a game of cat and mouse here for a little bit. One problem is I'm running low on my flight fuel here, which is a little bit of a problem. I'm going to go ahead and pop my next battle scanner. It's, it's a little bit of an overlap, which I don't like, but uh, I really want to spot him soon. And my last battle scanner is going to run out uh, next turn anyway. I love that. The, the amount of visibility I have on the battlefield. Okay, he's over there. I have now found him. Oh, and that was not what I... Yeah, that's uh, ending the turn on a reveal is, is usually not ideal. Usually not what you had hoped to do. All right, claim your victory. And at point blank, my hip is 100%, so plasma rifle is enough to hit. Good game. It's a good game, Pete. All right. But of course, that is just the first of our best of three. And, uh, and we're going to go ahead and set up another match here so that you guys can do the next one. Everyone is saying uh, GG in the, uh, in the chat there. Good game indeed. That was, uh, that was a lot of fun. It's fun, you know, I haven't done the, uh, the Archangel Sniper strategy in a while. Uh, it was, I thought I was oh so smart when I, when I did it the first time and then I found out that it's one of the most 
uh, common strategies that people like to play with. You did a good you did a good job pairing the uh, the sniper with a really heavy spotter and uh, using the um, using the assault soldier. Uh, I tried something similar, but I economized on my sniper's armor, which turned out not to be good. And I used floaters as my spotter units, and you know they're weak individually, and I made the mistake of spreading them out too far, so they couldn't support each other. I should have paired them a little bit closer together, and at the end, I I should have timed my moves a little bit better than that. So I know what I would do differently next time. So for our next match, uh, what what map do you want to use? Uh, let's see. I'm thinking uh, we had definitely a, that was a, a cool open one. I I like that map a lot. But let's go ahead and do one of the uh, one of the maps that's got a nice uh, indoor space. So I'm thinking a police station. Yeah, that sounds good. So we're gonna go the same settings. Ten thousand points, ninety seconds, and okay. uh, and then we're, I'm gonna go ahead and get you uh, get you in my game here. Okay, send me the invite. Whoops, I need to uh, go back online in Steam here. Uh, so it's actually interesting that you uh, that you mentioned that you economized on your uh, armor and went with the uh, you went with the skeleton suit, right? Instead of uh, instead of the archangel armor, because I had mentioned that when outfitting my guy, and I thought in that map there wasn't enough high ground to get just from a skeleton suit, which is why I went Archangel. I would have preferred to go skeleton. Uh, and then going with, the, uh, going with the ghost suit as my second unit was, uh, everyone thought that was really risky, only fielding two units total in the entire match, uh, which is risky. It, it, it makes your, your whole strategy very, very top heavy, and, uh, and it's, it's dangerous. So we're going to bring the uh, bring the game back in view for all of you guys, so you can see me customize my dude, and I will uh, I'll mute myself to Pete so that we can talk. All right, guys. Police station. Police station is interesting. Um, it's got a lot of ups and downs. I'm thinking. Man, I haven't even thought about this. A lot of people are saying uh, Berserker, which I, I really do want to do. Uh, I've never actually played with a Berserker, though. So I'm a little concerned that I won't know how to use it effectively. Um, I'm a little concerned I won't know how to use it effectively. So I see Mr. Adroth25. You will be my Berserker because you told me to do it anyway. So uh, clearly you guys are just saying this because you want to see a Mutant Berserker in, uh, in play, and I don't blame you. So this is indoor. There's, there's a lot of indoor space. I'm not going to go flyers. Uh, I'm, yeah, you, wanna do, uh, you want me to do a sectoid commander. The problem is I did that against uh, Jake, I think, and my problem was it turned out that he fielded almost all... Uh, mechanical units, which are immune to the, the, the sectoid commander's mind control. And if you completely negate the sectoid commander's mind control, it really makes that a giant waste of points, because it's the only thing that he's really good at. Uh, it's, I shouldn't say it's the only thing he's really good at, but it's certainly why he, why he costs what he does. So I'm going to... Um, and then I also went Thin Men uh, last time with my sectoid commander, which is especially a bad idea, because than the mechanic is. But I'll go the sectoid commander because you guys are asking. Um, my, and I know you guys are at now asking for chrysalids. The problem with going at chrysalids is then uh, I'm re well, first of all, I'm 200 points over my limit. I can't do all three of these. Uh, if I go chrysalid, then my, both my Mutant Berserker and chrysalid are melee units. And if he goes a little bit, fly if he goes too many flyers, like if he does have a, um, if he does go sniper strategy again, uh, that would be, uh, that would be a problem. So I'm actually not going to go with the chrysalid. Uh, my Mutant Berserker is my melee guy. Um, I hadn't really given it much thought about who else I would take. A Muton uh, could be good. I don't want to go Thin Men because if he's going mechanical, uh, the Sector Commander is already useless and the Thin Man's poison would then also be useless. So. Uh, we're going to go with, uh, you know what, a cyber disk is not a bad idea. Oh, but it's, that's way, way, way more expensive. 
Yeah, cyber disk is uh, one of the most expensive units. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go... Uh, All right, I'm trying something a little bit different this time. I think I should take a, a soldier, right? We'll go, uh, we'll go a muton. Oh, wow, even a muton puts me over. Uh, I'm going to have to go a soldier. Because I don't want to go thin man. Pete, I'm uh, I'm still agonizing over here. Uh, they're they're giving lots of suggestions here, so uh, I'll be done in just a second. Okay, we're going soldier. We're gonna go with a uh, we're gonna go with a heavy because I want to uh, I want to rocket launcher his ass. And uh, there is a build called the Rocket Man, which is just the rocket launcher. So he's a he's a pretty low promotion, but it has just few enough points that it keeps me under. Two hundred points left. Which means, but this is kind of weird because really I'm putting all my eggs in the uh, rocket launcher basket because he's going to have a really crappy LMG. Oh, 200 points. This is for the heavy laser. That'll probably be worth upgrading. Either that or a scope. Um, I'm going to go with the heavy laser. I think the increased damage on the heavy laser is going to be more valuable than going with, uh, than going with a scope, which would increase my chance to hit. So... Uh, what do grenades cost? Oh, they're very expensive. Okay. And uh, that guy who said, marry me, Mr. Pod Pod Pod, that's, uh, that's a reason to get named. So, oh, you know what? My Z key on my keyboard doesn't work, and it's not because of the game. It's because I set up Mumble and screwed something up and made it. I was going to use Z as my mute button. So now I can't type the Z button. So that's kind of silly. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be Mr. Vid May, uh, Mr. Uh, wait, didn't I say Pod Pod Pod? Why did I say Z? Pod Pod Pod. God, my brain's not working. This does not bode well for this match. All right, Pete, can you hear me? He can't. Pete, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, good. I I realized that I had set up the Z button on my keyboard to mute mumble because I was going to use that instead of the switch on my cord. But then when I was trying to name units, the Z button wasn't working because I told mumble to suppress it. And then I couldn't figure out what was going on. So mystery solved. Now uh, I'm ready. OK, so go ahead and press start and then press start again to confirm. Yep. Uh, Pete's already ready it up, so we're going to go ahead and go in. All right, I get to go first this time because I have uh, the smaller point cost. Those of you guys asking about XCOM shirts. Yeah, that's right. That's an XCOM shirt. I'm wearing it. We have some XCOM shirts, but I do not believe they're on sale anywhere. Um, we've, been, we've given them away at conventions. So uh, if, you, if you were at E3 or Comic-Con or PAX, you had an opportunity to, if you waited in line to play the game, you got to uh, get to get a shirt. We don't have very many. I can't give all of you shirts. There are 4,000 people watching. Okay, I'm going to mute Pete here. All right, guys. So I haven't even thought about how to play this strategy. I have no idea what I'm doing. It's actually I'm, I'm actually really terrified that I'm going with such a... Uh, uh, strategy that I have no idea what I'm doing. So um, he can't get to me in one turn, so I'm going to say it's safe to uh, it's safe to dash here. Uh, I'm still putting him against cover. I don't even actually know why. I'm hoping to get him to the door next turn. Uh, the sectoid commander obviously is um, going to be very important to get to get a mind control in, which means I need to get visibility inside this building so I can try to mind control him as he comes in. It's very it's nerve-wracking, though, because the sectoid commander is pretty weak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put him... He's actually not that... Actually, he's not that weak. Ten hit points. I'm going to put him by the door but not open it. And then I can open the door uh, later once I know someone's in there and surprise him because he won't be able to see that sectoid commander. Wow. Okay, so the berserker can move very far. Like I said, I've never played a berserker, so I, I'm not... He's got one ability. He can melee and he can bull rush breaking cover, which is actually going to be great for, um, yeah. So I'm going to put my Berserker all the way inside. He can't already be there. Well, never say can't. Stop, stop breaking windows, Greg. Yeah, so, so by breaking the window, P 
Pete knows that I broke a window, which means he knows that I'm inside somewhere. Uh, and if he knows the map very well, he even knows the possibilities of where that can be. And if he knows the game extraordinarily well, he even knows what units have a move range that could potentially do that on the first turn. These are all sorts of things I'm excited to see. The, uh, the, the, the best players in the world will be, will be able to do this stuff secondhand. They'll, they'll know, okay, well, the list of units he has is down to three, and you know, he can only be in one of these three spots because they heard the window break. Um, that's really exciting to me. I like that level of play. So... Um, I think that's cool. All right, guys. So I thought I heard a guy over here. I heard footsteps. Um, I don't know where he is. Uh, I'm this. My berserker can't even Overwatch. This is such a weird unit. Uh, I'm gonna sit him in here, Mr. Droth. Okay, Mr. Pod Pod Pod. We're gonna put you over here now. Don't put the Berserker outside, I completely agree. Now I can actually see inside now because this door has a window on it. Uh, and I don't see anyone in there yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, overwatch in case he does come in that part of the building. Now I'm nervous that he's gonna be coming around the back side here. Uh, I'm fairly certain there's no one in the, but once I open this door, I can't close it, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to, uh, I'm actually gonna just leave him right there and try to get Pete to make more of the first move. And I don't even want to move this Berserker. I want him to stay here, because if he opens this door, I believe he still won't have line of sight on me, which is what I want. So I'm going to just end my turn. Your move, Pete. Uh, for the version of the game, we're actually we're playing the PC version of the game, but uh, I am using a gamepad. Uh, I really I like the mouse and keyboard interface. I also really like the gamepad interface. I can't say which is my favorite, but you know, recently I have been doing a lot of moving towards playing my PC games with a controller. Because my computer at home is hooked up to my television as a second monitor, so I can easily play any of my games on my big TV with a controller on my couch. But I still get the resolution and the frame rate and the you know all those features that we love that. Um, that what makes us PC gamers so happy. And uh, so I've been doing that more and more just because I really like being able to, uh, to sit on my couch while I play a game. And also my wife likes to watch me uh, play video games and it's way more convenient if I'm playing it on the big TV than the monitor. So uh, that's one reason I've just kind of gotten used to playing this with the controller. Uh, okay, so I'm a little nervous. I'm distracted, obviously. Uh, I don't know what to do. I'm actually completely stunned with indecision. I don't want to tip my hand. My rocket launcher, you can only fire at the beginning of the turn. I, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside here. Now he knows I kicked in a door and there are only a couple doors on this map. Uh, he knows I kicked in a door, probably. Uh, I'm actually gonna pull back the sectoid to over here in case he's coming around that side of the building. I'm also worried that he's going around the top of the building. I should have opened the door quietly, you guys are completely right. Uh, you're completely right that I should have done that. That was a bad idea. Um, what are you guys saying no about? He could be on the roof. Uh, you're right, which is why one reason I'm pulling that guy back to the truck. But I've got him behind the truck in such a place that he won't be able to see uh, that I'm behind that truck. Because I went to the middle, not to the edge of it. Dashing, I know you guys say never ever dash. Well, certainly I do agree that I should be moving halfway and then the other halfway so that you can react halfway through. It's pretty much always a better move. And with the sectoid, I should have done that. Uh, I, I will. All right, it's gonna be your turn. You're right, he is above me. I'm pretty certain of it now. Uh, I didn't field any units that can, easily, uh, that can easily move on the Y axis, which is a little bit, uh, a little bit of a problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move my uh, Berserker up here and see if I can see him on the second floor. He's not on the second floor. I think he's on the roof. So this was the risk um, by going with a Berserker. If he's on the roof, I don't have a way of getting up there. I'm not, I don't even think there's a ladder, and I'm not actually certain that the Berserker can use ladders. Uh, so if he's on the roof, 
my Berserker can't get up there. Uh, which is definitely a problem. So I'm going to keep uh, keep my keep doing the kind of hidden berserker thing of trying to keep him so that he doesn't see visibility. Um, my heavy could counter guys on the roof. I could rocket launcher up there. You think get everybody inside and play the turtling game? It's definitely a possibility. Uh, I'm going to keep this person on Overwatch here. She's really weak. She has she will die on the first shot. That he takes against me. Uh, I think you guys are correct that I should be getting inside here. Uh, so I'm gonna go visible. Okay, I see a guy. He's right around the edge there. That's a problem. I need to get inside pronto. That was really bad. That was really bad. I'm really nervous about that. No, sir. And he has a ghost armor because I heard him. I heard him deep cloak. He probably has full visibility on me. Uh, okay. Crap. That was a terrible move. What? Oh, good. Oh, even the critical hit. Oof. Oh. <gasps> what? <laughs> Oh, that's terrible. That made the chat explode. Yes, cue the that's XCOM baby comments. Ooh. Oh, interesting move. That's XCOM baby. He, you damaged your own unit for the sake of finishing I'm, off the commander. I'm not going to leave a sectoid commander and that's completely the right move. I mean, yeah, I would mind control you, which yeah, that's uh whew. Okay. Well, we're going to do this. Hi there. Never used this before. All right. So at least I took out one of his big units, and also I that have. That was good. Uh, that was good attack. I know where two of his guys are now. Uh, I'm gonna want to get in a spot to use my rocket launcher. There are no great spots for it, but I'm thinking, oh god, that's a dash. Let's go halfway, see if it doesn't change visibility. This is a really risky move, but I'm fairly certain uh, that that's going to be okay. Yo, he has visibility on me. All right. So, what, uh, what my... Well, my strategy here is team. to put my uh, rocket launcher here so that I can fire my rocket launcher over in this direction. Um, because I know that his heavy is somewhere over here because he fired a rocket launcher. Or it could have been a grenade, but I think it was a rocket launcher. Uh, and I don't want to chase that guy down with my berserker, I don't think. Oh, I could. Should I go get that guy? Should I charge him? It's a trap, certainly, right? Let me see. Uh... I'm thinking of hiding my berserker again. Well. No, I should stay inside. I should stay inside until I'm sure of uh, what else he's got. I think I've seen most of his units there. But I don't have as firm a grasp on the number of points everything costs to know that for sure. Um, 
I'd really like to get in a nice position where I can rocket launcher him from the side. Uh, and this could be a decent spot for it, unless he's got something else. And that, this is my super, super exposed guy, so I can't, uh, I can't put him at too much risk. He's gonna come around the side to try to kill my heavy, because he knows about my heavy now. So we're gonna, um, Jesus. I know TikTok, I know TikTok. Uh, for lack of anything better to do, is I'm gonna straight up hide him, just for now. Because I don't want him to... Uh, Pete knows about the heavy because when I put him in position here, it was a bit of a miscalculation, uh, his SCOM soldier could see mine. So that means it showed him that I have him. And so I'm worried that Pete gonna, was going to come around the side here and shoot at my heavy, especially since it's only a, um, a seven hit point soldier because I didn't give him any decent armor. Uh, it's very risky. Now, I have the advantage of being able to put my Berserker outside. Now, I bet he has Overwatch. But we're gonna, uh, we're gonna go out there anyway. He's probably on Overwatch, so the second I move, he's gonna... But this, man, that's a good spot for a rocket launcher. Oh, oh, how I wish I could rocket launch that. So I'm gonna wanna get my rocket launcher in position to next turn take advantage of that, because I think he's gonna... Here, that could be, he could be fully visible. Here. Yes. Let's first see, let's first do our bull rush here. Two reaction shots. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Oh, he's got the close reaction shot power. And he missed, which was really unlucky for him. Well, that was uh, that was quite unlucky. But I missed as well, because I didn't do any damage. That's a, uh, that's a problem. So, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be game. Um, I'm hoping that he's gonna actually stay still to be able to finish off my um, to be able to finish off my berserker. Now he hit the berserker, and one thing a berserker does is he does oh, intimidate, this isn't good. which could panic his soldiers. Could, but I don't think he uh, I don't think he succeeded. Oh, he, did he have to reload? All right. He finished off my. Uh... So now, it took me all that to kill your berserker, and you still got a heavy with a heavy plasma rifle running around somewhere. He thinks I have a heavy plasma rifle. All I have is a laser, and unfortunately, well, the question is, if I shoot here, he's going to finish me off because it's going to destroy the cover, and as the reaction, that car's already blown up as far as I can tell. So going here would be, uh, I think it'd be really bad. That last round was horrible, really horrible. So uh, if I let him come at me, his next shot is gonna kill me. He'll, he'll, he'll do that. Pullback Overwatch is probably a good, good idea. I can't hit them both with the rocket launcher, and that would be the entire point of using the rocket launcher, would be to hit both of them. Um, I could go to high ground. We're gonna go here and we're gonna Overwatch. Stop breaking glass. It's not great. It's not great. I'm not feeling good about this, Pete. I'm actually feeling a know. lot worse about this now. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's still anybody's game.
So it's clearly rocket time. Here's the thing though. As soon as I fire the rocket, he's gonna fire back and he's gonna kill me. Guaranteed. I've got low cover, which is not great. Uh, terrible armor. My defense is horrible. Uh, he will hit me. But I think, uh, I think it's, because the rocket only does six damage, guaranteed, and it can't crit. So yeah, I'll do six damage to each of them, which won't kill either one. So we're gonna do it anyway, because everybody wants me to. I'm gonna lose anyway, they just wanna see a rocket, right? Yeah, that was your best move. It was my best move, I actually talked about it for a while. Everyone wanted me to fire the rocket. Um, but the reaction fire is near guaranteed to kill me. Uh, and I knew that the rocket wouldn't kill either of your units. Um, but there's also not much I can do. Uh, I only... I mean, it's my best shot, but yeah, that'll... Oh, you run and gunned. Yeah, so that'll... Uh, although, can he kill me in one hit? Oh. Yeah, yes, he can. It. Oh, you critical hit. Wow, Dude. that was... That was a... Tense match. It was Good a tense job. one. You know, it's the first time I've ever fielded a Berserker. I made a critical blunder with uh, that, that one where I moved him out uh, to the car. I mean, it didn't help that I missed. Uh, yeah, no, if you'd, if you'd hit, that would have been, uh, been the match. I, I think you did great. Um, you know, he took out my, uh, my highest cost assault soldier, the one who had the laser shotgun and the ghost armor. So that was... That's uh, true. That was, uh, that was nice. Yeah, so he uh, he paid for himself. You know, you don't need to worry about about him. Um, I got I got I guess lucky in that that uh, missile connected, but I was there was not going to be a way for me to kill your um, sectoid commander without damaging my own soldiers. So I figured that was a calculated risk there. Yeah, that and was then, actually my favorite move of both matches we've done so far. That was pretty. Uh, I gotta say that was a pretty brilliant, tactically brilliant move. Uh, the th the thing with multiplayer is because there's no, you know, you're not sending guys back to the base to recover afterwards. Uh, I I find myself making more of those choices where it's like, yeah, it's gonna wound my guy, but yeah, I need to take that shot. Yeah, it was it was interesting because I I thought I was so lucky. I went, oh sweet, it's very unlikely he can get a third unit in here to uh, to finish off my. The stream's still working, right? You guys can still see us. My thing all of a sudden said we have zero viewers, but I assume the program's just a. Uh... I'm misreporting that. Uh, yeah, everyone says yes. Okay, good. Um, the yeah, you know, I was certain that you, I was pretty sure that you weren't going to have a third unit that could get in there and shoot, and so I thought I was safe, and I was going to pull back the the sectoid and mind control one of your units, and then pull the berserker in to uh, to play interference so that you can't just charge the uh, the sectoid, and then all of a sudden a rocket that I can't even see it just blows up from the other side of the wall. And I was like, yep, those six damage on that guy was, uh, was well worth the cost. Totally, so, totally worth it. So we're on, to our th cool. we're on to the tiebreaker match, and this is pretty awesome. So maybe what we should do is we should let the, uh, the channel, uh, let our viewers pick what map to, to play on. I think that's a good idea. All right, guys, what map would you guys like to see? Uh, some options for you are you got the bar, which is that one that, that first one I played, uh, the first one I played, Jake in, so it's another this kind is, of uh, indoor map. Yeah, this is a very tight indoor map. Uh, the bar does have a roof. It's a good place to go and die. Um, the bar itself is is a, is a great place to fight inside as well, too. I'm seeing a lot of people say graveyard before we've even given it as an option. So I Grave think that's a pretty good yeah. indication that that would be a good one to do. That is a great one. That's a big, uh, it's a big map. It's got a lot of possibilities as well, too. Um, ooh, graveyard. Oh, I'm going to need to think about how yeah. to build a team for graveyard. Which is actually called Grand Cemetery, but everyone calls it the graveyard. That's um, fine. All right. So, RK, we're going, to, we're going Grand Cemetery. Send me your invite. I will, uh, I will invite you here. Let me uh, get it going. And here we go. Whoops. I always have to, for those of you wondering what takes me so long, I, I sign out of Steam friends because I don't want any of my chucklehead friends sending me messages that pop up on the live stream. See, I think, I think in advance. Although, obviously, this is learning from experience. There we go. Off. 
Okay. All right. All right. Clean slates. We're gonna Clean give slates. you guys a uh, view back into here. We're gonna clear this up and uh, gonna go ahead and start planning my team. I'll see you in a bit, Pete. See you in a bit. Okay. Okay. Guys, uh, if ethereals are available in multiplayer, we will not be using them uh, today. That was what I will say to that suggestion. Um, so we're only going to use units that you guys have uh, that you guys have seen before. Now that you've seen the Berserker, I think you've seen every unit that uh, that we're going to use in multiplayer. So Chrysalid could be fun, but what if he goes? Archangel Sniper. It would be a little boring if he did Sniper again, but also I think it's the best strategy on Grand Cemetery. I really think. It's a huge open map. Archangel, Arch Archangel Sniper is, is really good, but you guys want something different. You know, Cyber Discs are so slow, and this is such a big map that they have to move across, and I'm worried that they'll just get picked off before they get there. But you guys really want to see a Cyber Disc? No snipers. All right. I can't see his selections, guys. He's at 9,700. What are the possibilities with that? Hmm. Hmm. You think mutons? You guys want mutons, eh? Oh, he went over. I could, uh, I could go with a muton. And I have 2650 left. Which is, uh, not a lot. What do you think? Floaters? Hey, Greg, can I borrow 50 points? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, you guys, mutons are really expensive, which is why I'm not really into. Uh, that's why I'm not really into into that. You guys think drones? I find that in multiplayer, people tend to go very heavy on damage, so drones uh, repair pretty slowly. So. Uh, hmm. Mm. How many points do I have left again? 2650. You guys really want chrysalids, but in order to go chrysalid, I'd have to drop the muton. I just don't have enough points. They're three grand. Uh, okay, let me think. Let me think about what I will do here. All right, I'm set. Guys, I do want to win, not just pick guys you haven't seen before. I'm still agonizing, Pete. Mm. You know, 2x Chrysler and the Sniper would be really awesome. I'm doing, you know what? My objective here is to win. But I can't go 2x Crystal in the Sniper. My objective is to win. So we're going... We're going Archangel. I know I already did it. Uh, the phone in here is ringing. So I'm just going to push that button. Uh, okay. Look, guys, I know there are some units you want to see that you haven't gotten to see in action a lot, but uh, the objective here is to win, and I really, truly think Sniper is the best shot on this map. Now, Pete might not expect me to do that. He may expect me to, take, to do something that's more uh, interesting from a variety point of view. 
and I'm going to use that expectation uh, against him. Uh, so I'll go. I can go Thin Man now. You think Sectoids? A bunch of little Sectoids. I think I can still go with Thin Man, right? Thin Man is a. Uh, oh, Thin Man's fourteen hundred. I'll go Floater. Yeah, we'll go, uh, not Soldier, uh, we'll go Sectoids. All right, I'm taking some of your guys' advice. This is going to be really different than the last, uh, than the last Sniper. So I actually have an extra 100 points, so instead of Scope, uh, I could go for the Nanofiber Vest to get extra hit points, but I think uh, those chance to hit is going to be of the utmost importance. And is Deadeye the one I meant to do? Yeah, damn good ground. Battle scanner. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Pete. All right. All right. Let's go. Let's do this. I can leave a hundred points. Let's me go first. Um. All right, good luck, Greg. And you guys are also right that uh, having to move this many units in a 90-second game is uh, is rough. Now, the uh, the chrysalids move fast as hell. So I'm going to um, pull them all the way up into this building because this is a huge advantage of going first. Now, I know I shouldn't have dashed, but there was no reason to go halfway because there's no possibility of uh, having any visibility on these units. Uh, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna do a lot of dashing in this first turn because uh, I'm a sniper strategy here. So we need to uh, get a lot of visibility on the battlefield quickly. I know, I know, I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. Most important will be to get the sniper in the air, which I will do. I'll actually uh, do that next. Sniper in the air, and we're going to pull him actually way back because, as we know, the sniper with squad sight, there's no reason for him to be close at all. Uh, put him on pistol overwatch, even though it's pointless. And get my last sector. Absolutely right, uh, Silt 44. I shouldn't be that high. I want to be a little bit lower so I can get visibility into that building. I will adjust him next turn. Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm attempting to keep my sectoids in pairs, so that uh, so that they can mine merge each other. But uh, mine merge is very dangerous. Uh, two two for one opportunity. All right, your turn. So as I said, I'm gonna pull him down a little bit to about here. Oh, shit, I'm overwatched. Gotta remember not to do that. Okay, I'm not gonna move my chrysalid yet. God, these sectoids do not have a lot of movement. Uh, let's try to get a little visibility here. So the reason I would uh, dash instead of overwatch here is low cover is really bad. I would much, much, much rather have high cover, which is why I'm going to go here. Uh, and I think it's going to be best to keep a sectoid a little bit further back so that I can... And as you guys are saying, I should keep... Uh, I should keep Sectoid relatively close to my soldier, so I'm actually going to do this and not go too much further forward. He's going to um, overwatch. Oh yeah, I better remember about time. I will stop explaining what I'm doing and just do it. Just got a dash. I can change units while they're moving, as you guys have pointed out. Okay. Um, 
the crystal definitely needs to stay hidden until the time is right. So I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna move him. I don't even want the noise to give him away. I know, look, I started using the uh, thing. Guys, I know you like to make fun of Dash to Cover, but once you start actually playing this game, you'll realize that you can't just overwatch every single turn. Oftentimes, it's better to go get that high cover. And in the multiplayer turn time limit, if you know... Oh, I hear him. You know, the worst part it's about uh, Grand Cemetery is it's such a big map, and, you know, just like Train Yard, it's a long time before you come into contact with somebody, and that whole time, that tension is just building and building and building. Yeah, it's nerve-wracking. Plus, if you don't have units that have, um... All, all the units that have a lower move speed, which in some of the smaller maps, you're like, eh, not a big deal. Here, you really feel it. There's a lot the of places here where you can't move from high cover to high cover. There's just... It's too spread out that you're going to have to just deal with being in low cover sometimes, which I don't like. And the whole time you're doing it, you're like, you know, I'm moving towards that mausoleum in the middle of it, and if I, you know, every turn I'm not getting there, the other guy might be... Or, you know, really good positions in the middle of the map. It's, yeah, it's tense. I hear movement. Yeah, you know, I heard movement the previous turn. Ah, I like this. I was able to get here during the first move so I can actually overwatch, which is, uh, which is nice. And obviously, this guy's switching back to the plasma rifle. Plasma sniper rifle. Again, gonna keep the chrysalids still. I don't know where his units are yet, so I'm going to hedge my bets. The thing is, because I want to get him inside this building, pretty much what I want to do. I don't actually think I can see to here, which is a little bit of a problem. I should move a sectoid off. I need, I need, I need to overwatch. There, I uh, screwed that up. Didn't get overwatch on all my units, but those guys in the far back are not gonna. Um, it's unlikely that they're gonna have time. So yeah, I ran out of time there. But uh, okay, here he goes. Sectoid. He sees my chrysalid now. Craig, you brought a chrysalid. That was so sweet of you. I don't like the way you say that. Guys, I'm nervous. I mean, darn. <laughs> oh. Oh, the I don't like chrysalids, guys. I picked it because of you. Now, watch as I start blaming everyone but myself. It's your guys' fault. I did what you wanted me to. Uh, I do need to learn to keep my stuff back. I'm actually, uh... That is true. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. I need to, I need to speed it up here. that guy. And we're going to move him, hoping to get a shot on that uh, sectoid in there. Right here. There he is. All right, you got my scout. All right, I was, I was pretty happy with that, with that move. Now, I know you guys are gonna hate this, but I need to get my sectoid up there because I need to get visibility on his units so that I can, uh, so I can use my sniper. I know where his two units are. Those are his two heavy units. Oh, he 
brought a sectoid commander. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is I'd really like to mine merge. I need to use my sniper. He needs to be on overwatch. That's most important. I got it! Damn, didn't use it in time. Okay. That's a nice sectoid. Yeah, that's uh, going to be a little bit of a problem. I think I'll take it. Oh! I, I keep... You know, I told myself when we did our little dry run to not put my controller down because it rattles like hell when I get shot. Yes, this is the PC version. Guys, it's far from over because he doesn't know that I want Archangel Sniper yet. And now I believe I'll have visibility on two of his units. That was a 75% chance shot I just blew. Okay, I can probably, uh, if I critically hit with this... If only there was a catchphrase that we could, we could yell every time something like that happened. Okay. We gotta shoot that guy. He's the most important to hit. Let's just do it. Let's open up with that. Let's not waste time. Cross your fingers. Okay, it didn't critically hit. I'm pretty much gonna throw this guy away to get, um... Oh, I can't quite get flanking. Oh, 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 overwatch. I got lucky. A little bit luck, a little bit the fact that um, he's mind merged makes all his stats go up. 35% chance is not great, but uh, I need to take it. Right. Whatever. It's okay. We're gonna um, overwatch him. And uh, we're gonna hide this sector. Yes, I will let him come to me. That's why I'm putting this guy behind. These two sectoids I have left that are in the back here are going to stay hidden. Uh, force him to reveal himself. He wants to take on my sniper. He can, uh... Oh, wow, that was... That had to have been an unlucky shot. Yeah, Mr. I better not miss this one. Mr. JRock184, this is XCOM Enemy Unknown. It comes out Tuesday. And yes, it looks awesome because it is awesome. I hope that's... Okay. So what I need to do now is mute my microphone. All right. There's no way I'm going to mind merge my sniper. That is the worst advice anyone is giving. I'm going to force him to come to me. Uh, there's no reason for me to... I should be pulling all the way back. Get him... Well, not all the way back. I'm actually liking where these guys are. I'm actually liking this setup pretty much perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and overwatch him. I'm thinking I'm gonna move my sniper. Uh, he knows where I was. So I'm gonna move my sniper expecting that he's gonna try to come at me from the side. I'd like to uh, to use a battle scanner, but I can't get it in a um, in a spot that I'm really happy with. So we're gonna go way way over here. Running on flight field, we're gonna just overwatch here. Let's see what happens. This is far from um, far from over. Let's see what, let's see what we do.
And yes, for, for anyone saying I should move then Overwatch, you can't do that with a sniper rifle. Not with his build. All right, so you've got a plasma sniper somewhere in the backfield. You've got at least one sectoid left. You might have more, I'm not sure. You've timed out at the beginning, which could be from shuffling around a lot of units. But uh, I'm lucky you didn't kill my, uh, kill my soldier that one turn you got a shot in. Yeah, that was, um, I was really hoping to get that. It was a suicide sectoid run. Uh, which I think was worth the, uh, worth the probability. It was a 35% chance, and if he hit, he would have finished him off. Uh, and that was, that was worth. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Because he was, he was a mind-merged sectoid as well. He was basically as, as, as good a chance as I was going to get. Without getting a flank? Yeah, that was, that was fine. Yeah, you know what? He was, he was one, one tile away from, uh, from getting a flank. So part of the build of that uh, that sniper is that he has opportunist, which means uh, normally you take a penalty on uh, reaction shots. I'm thinking he might come super wide, so do you think I should move this guy out here to get a little further visibility? He'll probably kill me though as soon as he sees me. So no, I'm going to stay here. I don't like just turtling and doing nothing though. Everyone says, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. I do say that I want to win. I know, I know. My desire to have interesting turns is conflicting with my desire to win. So, uh, I'm all about trying to put on a good show on these live streams, uh, which is why sometimes I may not play as ideally because I think it's more fun to, to, to field a wacky team or it might be more fun, it might be more interesting if I'm doing things that show more action each turn. Uh, and so that's usually the way I go and I've kind of defended myself on the forums before where I'm like, ah, I'm not playing to the best of my ability. Today, I, I, my objective is to play to the best of my ability. Uh, but it kills me to just sit here turtling uh, on a live stream, especially since you can only see my screen. It's just like, ugh, I'm making them watch me just over I wonder if you're doing already. what I think you're doing. He thinks I'm doing something. So, you could tell me. You could tell me what you're doing and, and confirm uh, confirm my suspicions. I'm thinking I should stay. I gotta stay here. I wonder what it is you think I'm doing. Because I don't know what it is that you think I'm doing. But I would love to know. I think I know what you think you're doing. But I don't know that I think I know what you're doing. All right, so guys, that was uh, on purpose. I did that so that I could uh, get some more information about where he is. Uh, so the question is, should I snipe or should I go back into safety? Oh, actually, I can't see. He's got the cover. So I'm going back, I'm going back here. Okay. Yeah, see, I went back. No, 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 suppression wouldn't be good. His other unit would kill me easily. Sectoids are super, super, super weak. He's using the cover of the building. My sniper couldn't see in there. I might have to land my sniper to get uh, visibility in there. Oh, he's coming around. Ooh, reaction shot. Overwatch shot. All right. That sniper has opportunist, which I was explaining to the chat earlier. Um, means that he does not suffer the, the normal penalty that reaction fire. Reaction fire normally is just playing less accurate than active fire. Um, but the opportunist perk is a very valuable perk that makes it so that you can fire and reaction fire just as effectively. So it's paid off that time. Pretty clear option here. Headshot across the map, 88% chance to hit, 65% chance to critical. 
Nice shot. 18 damage crit. Holy moly. Did you headshot? Uh, yeah, that was a headshot. All right, guys, so he's got a sectoid commander left and it still has mind control. Uh, it's exceptionally important that he does not sneak around uh, to get in range of using his mind control on my sniper. That would be a problem. Now, I could kill his sectoid commander if he does, but I would only have two tiny sectoids to do it. Um, it's very, very important that he does not get close enough to do that. Uh, which means doing stupid things like this. There. I did that on purpose so that I could find him. Now I know where he is. It's actually a bit of a problem. Uh, I'm gonna have to do this. Now, you're gonna ask why I did that? Seems like a stupid move. He's close enough, I think, that he could have sprinted out and mind controlled my sniper. Well, that was a good try. By suppressing him, I'm forcing him to have to, uh, by suppressing him, I forced him to have to deal with my sectoid instead of running out to my sniper. That's giving me the option now to dash as much as you guys hate it. But by dashing, I'll get visibility on his commander and I believe, well, let's try not dashing. Maybe I can get lucky and get, no, you know what? Because it's a, because it's one, this is his maximum range, I don't want to screw up the first half of the move and not be able to make it. I got a dash here. Get visibility. Oh, it's 68%. It's not wonderful. Nicely done. Very good, Greg. Ooh. You, uh, you are the... Undisputed winner. That was uh, that was exciting, Pete. Actually, you know, I I'm actually really happy about that suppression move in the end. There, it just came to me. My uh, what I was explaining when I before I moved there was that I was terrified that you were going to have a uh, that your sectoid commander had been moving up unbeknownst to me and was going to possibly be able to mind control my sniper, which would have been uh, game over because I wouldn't have been able to take down your commander with two sectoids in time uh, before the sniper was able to take my guys down. So I put that guy on sort of a suicide thing and by suppressing the sectoid commander, it made it so that it was um, not wise for you to try to go and do the mind control thing. So made, for, forced you to have to deal with the, with the sectoid. So that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. Good game, Pete. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thanks for, uh, thanks for inviting me to play today. I'm sorry I failed as a sniper again. I told the chat, you know, I have such a desire to have variety in these live streams. Uh, not just when I do it professionally, but I live stream on my personal channel as well. And I like to put on a show. I like to make it different each time. But uh, my desire to have it different each time uh, conflicted with my desire to win. And I really felt going a uh, uh, sniper was going to be the way to go here. Uh, no, I think, that was a, I think that was a good choice. It's a, a good use of scout units on the map. Um, Except for know, that you, chrysalid, which, which was a big, uh, that was a big point sink that ended up being very ineffective. Well, you know, that's, uh, that's XCOM. I, I think you did a fine job. Uh, it looks like your, your plans came together, and, and uh, yeah, you won uh, fair on. All right. Well, uh, that, those three matches ended up taking uh, an hour and a half. So, uh, so I think we're going to call it at that. And um, sometime later, sometime in the future, maybe next week, maybe release week, I'd love to do a live stream of a, of a multiplayer match that's like at 20,000 points because they play very differently. You've got a, just a ton of powerful units on the map. Uh, they're kind of, they're fun in a different way. Uh, I, I like 10,000 being the, the, pro, uh, the pro config though. So, uh, but yeah, so everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to this match. It was a lot of fun. Thank you, uh, Pete, for coming and, and playing with me and, and, and making this matchup possible, which I know the, uh, the people on the, the forums were really excited about. Well, thanks for having me, Greg. I appreciate it. And uh, and for anyone asking, it'll be this match will be on YouTube uh, soon. We'll get it. Uh, we got to get it cut up and put the intro on it. 
and uh, we'll get it there. Yeah, so there will be a video on demand. You'll be able to watch it in, in replay on YouTube. I'll, I'll post on the forums when we have that ready. And uh, I'll see all of you on Tuesday when this game releases. So, uh, so get your pre-orders in now. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but if you're, if you're PC fans, if you like Steam, uh, we hit the third tier of pre-orders. So now if you pre-order XCOM Enemy Unknown, you actually get um, Civilization V for free. Uh, and if you already own Civilization V, it gives you an extra copy so that you can uh, gift it to a friend. Uh, you also get some Team Fortress 2 uh, items, which I really like, uh, and, um, and the Elite Soldier Pack, which you get from everywhere. So, uh, again, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, viewers. Thank you, fans. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and I'll see you next live stream, whenever.